How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today we're taking my old, dirty, and very neglected truck and getting it ready for the biggest road trip I've ever taken, over 5,000 miles. And we only have a day to get it ready, so I should probably get to work. So if you guys are new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoy it. I love this truck. This truck is my 2000 Ford F350 with dual rear wheels. It's a crew cab. It can seat six. It has a long bed and it weighs about 8,000 pounds and it has a huge diesel engine. However, it needs a little bit of work. And the reason why it needs work is because I'm taking it on a road trip, like I said in the intro. And this road trip is to get another car. Now you guys might think that I have a lot of cars. I do, but this car is special and you guys will be along every step of the way and you guys will really like it. I think it's gonna blow some minds when I get it. But uh, for now, this is gonna be the vehicle that gets us there and also that tows it back. Because as we know, every good car has to come on the back of a tow truck. Okay. Hopefully there's no snakes in here because that would really suck. So my OG subscribers will remember this truck from the video where I laid out everything wrong with this truck. And I'm a little embarrassed to say I really haven't done much to it since then. It's just been kind of a workhorse and it's been working ever since. But as you can see, it's very, very dirty and it still has all those problems. Number one is the exhaust leak. There's an exhaust leak coming from the turbo. Actually, it might not come from the turbo. It's probably from the downpipes because the downpipes, they create a seal, at least they're supposed to with a turbo, and when metal expands when it gets hot, that's when that seal opens up and it creates a leak. So in order to fix that, you either weld in a new flex section or you get a new set of downpipes, and that's exactly what I did. So I got these guys on eBay, and as you can see, instead of a flex section, there's just a bellows section right here, which makes it well, pretty much perfect for when it expands and this has to come in and out. So that is really good. And also I got a new, uh, whatever this thing is that attaches to the turbo and then attaches to the downpipe right here. So it should be a bolt on solution. However, I do need to take off basically the entire turbo. And since I'm there, I could do some preventative maintenance, including this pedestal with seals. So this is where the turbo sits. This is where the uh, oil feed and return go. And these tend to go bad after a while just because of heat cycles and whatnot. Usually just supposed to replace the O-ring in here, but I want to replace the entire thing just to make sure that we are completely level. But I didn't leave it there. I don't want to keep that turbo stock. I wanted to give a little bit more power than what came out of the factory. So I got this. This is an ATS ported compressor housing. And what this does is it eliminates compressor surge. Compressor surge is when you make so much boost and so much pressure in the intake stream that when you have any slowdown in the engine, then all that pressure just comes back in and hits the turbo blades and it makes that choo 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 choo, -choo sound. And even though that sounds pretty cool, I don't want it on this truck because I want this truck to last a million miles or more. So what this does is it takes all that air and diverts it around the blade. And you can see on the other side, there's a little ring right here and the air just kind of seeps through. And it also is a ported housing, meaning that it takes in more air. I think it's around 17% more air, which means more boost, which means more power, which means more efficiency, which means a faster truck. And to top it all off, I got this thing. This is a fuel rail crossover or FRX kit. Now, this might be a little bit fiddly for a lot of people, but the geeks in the audience will appreciate it. The way that the fuel system is distributed in this truck is a little bit odd. There's usually a feed and return in normal cars, which means that there's a feed line coming from the tank, and then there's a return line going to the tank uh, for excess pressure. This is more of a returnless system called a deadhead system, meaning that all the fuel that comes in is just getting distributed to the injectors. The problem is sometimes you get air bubbles in your fuel and you definitely don't want that going through your injectors, which means that the number eight injector sometimes gets leaned out or it has an air bubble in it and it definitely doesn't get the fuel that it needs. This solves all that and this has a little fuel pressure regulator with some springs that you can adjust to uh, set the PSI to whatever you want. So I have something for a little bit more high performance, I have something for economy, and I have something for regular running. I think we're gonna keep it at regular running, but uh, this is just a bolt-on affair. It shouldn't be that hard and it should be kind of fun. Well, in a really dirty sort of way.
So a quick FYI for anybody wondering, diesels are very, very, very dirty. This is a turbocharger from the 7.3 liter turbo diesel V8 in my Ford and it's sort of seen better days, honestly. Uh, right here, there's some foreign object damage, meaning that there's something that came into the compressor housing and chewed up some of this wheel. Now, this wheel is, I could still use it. I think it should be fine for, you know, a few more miles or something like that. Uh, definitely should be fine for the trip. I don't think this is gonna be an issue, but you definitely don't want this. There's a there's a lot of little pitting and, and it, this isn't good at all. So I'm gonna have to replace this wheel at some point. I'm gonna have to take this turbo back out uh, put a new wheel in and then have it balanced because this goes up to 120,000 RPM and that needs to be very finely balanced. All right, now let's start from the bottom to the top. This is what the turbo sits on. It's called a turbo pedestal. And inside here, there's a little arm that's called the EBPV, the exhaust back pressure valve. And what this is supposed to do is in colder temperatures, uh, it's supposed to basically let the exhaust create some back pressure and your engine theoretically heats up a little bit faster. The problem is this thing leaks a lot and I think this is the reason why my truck has a lake in the middle of the engine. So uh, this is gonna get replaced with a brand new turbo pedestal with no EBPV, meaning that that function is gone, but I don't really need it since I live in Florida. And also I don't really think that it did that much anyway. And we're definitely gonna get rid of that oil leak. So if we look at the back of the turbo, you see what the exhaust valve actually did. It would shut off all the exhaust, creating back pressure and heating up the engine a little bit quicker. And when it got to operating temperature, it would just open up, letting the exhaust flow like normal. So we don't need this. So we got one that is free flowing and it should give us a little bit more power. And also this guy, this is a, uh, just a Y pipe and that goes to the two down pipes. And we got a new one of those as well. But the big component I'm really excited about is this. I've already showed you the ATS compressor housing, but here it is in comparison to the old one. You can see that the ATS one is so much bigger and the old one is, well, it's just kind of past it. So now we have to put everything back together and installation as always is reversal removal. So let's cue the music. All right, I have pushed this thing out into the street because I've heard that when you do these mods to the truck, it doesn't really want to start all that well and it also makes a smoke show. So I didn't want that happening in there. So everything is closed off and here she is. So we did the bigger compressor housing, we did the fuel crossover, and we also did an oil change, as well as some other maintenance items. I did tighten down the battery terminals and do some uh, some battery tie down so they don't shift around. So let's see if this thing starts up. The number one thing I'm looking for is fuel pressure. So before, when fuel pressure came up, well, uh, when the fuel pump ran, this was at about 20 to 10 PSI. It was really, really low. So let's see what happens right now and <laughs> oh yeah that that is awesome now it's uh, flickering a little bit just because my uh, camera but you can see that it's right around 50 like 48 to 50 psi which is right on the money i think it might actually be a little low i think it should be around 60 psi but that is way better than what we had the fuel pump has primed and uh, let's try it again so the procedure for this is you want to definitely prime the fuel pump a bunch just to get all the fuel in the lines all right, 
and I'm gonna do that one more time. I'm going to cycle the key three times, and that should be okay. It's not cold or anything like that. It's actually quite warm. <laughs> wow. So everything is running pretty nicely. I don't know what to do about that flicker. Sorry about that, guys. But the truck is running pretty nicely. I don't smell any exhaust. I don't see any coming out either. Let's give it a little bit of a rev. A little bit. <laughs> All right, so I might need to do something about that tune. <laughs> All right, so she rolls coal a little bit. That's fine, that's fine. Not, not a big deal. Uh, we can deal with that later, but I wanna see how this thing drives. All right, so first drive in the truck, and uh, I'm not really all that nervous. This truck has almost 300,000 miles on it, and um, it's, it's built to withstand this kind of uh, underpaid and overworked nature. So one thing I did is I connected another rear view camera. So let's see if that works. All right, so I had a problem with my rear view camera. It was some cheap Chinese made garbage and uh, it wasn't working and now I got another cheap Chinese camera and now it is working so let's see how well this thing drives now I know this thing is gonna need a tune I do have a DP tuner right here and it's on three which is the sort of hot boy tune it's not a race tune but it's uh, it's enough to give a little bit more power I think it's not what exactly what I need for my uh, compressor housing so Maybe we're gonna to need to change that and uh, have them email me a tune or something like that, but I just wanna see what the drivability of this thing is like. All right, so that's pretty normal. Oh, <laughs> that's not bad. That is not bad at all. So I hear that compressor housing a lot more. I don't know if you can hear it on camera. Probably can't because I don't have an intake, but it's a more sharp sound coming from the compressor housing, coming from the turbo. Let's just give it a little. Oh, that is not. <laughs> all right, all right, this truck is truck is a little faster. It's a little faster than it was. I'm not gonna say that it's like crazy fast, not Lambo fast, but for a truck that weighs 7,500 pounds, it ain't that bad at all. So one thing I've noticed is that the boost is actually a little bit lower than what I'm normally used to. Uh, it tops out, well on that last run, it went to 10 PSI and it should be at around 15 to 20. So I wanna see if maybe there's something wrong with the wastegate or maybe I just didn't adjust it properly, which is definitely possible. And it's also possible that I'm just making more power with less boost. So I'm gonna see what that's like. Three point turns. Woo. All right, let's let's see how good it is from a standing start. Should build some boost up. Uh, torque break it a little bit. Woo. <laughs> All right, we hit about hitting about 15 to 20 psi. <laughs> Uh, this truck is quick, dude. <laughs> this truck is quick. I have my friend behind the camera. This thing is, uh, this thing is nice. It's a lot faster than it was. And I don't hear that exhaust leak. There's just a little bit of a hissing. I don't know if that's normal or not. You guys can tell me in the comments, but <laughs> this thing is a lot of fun. So this thing has to go to uh, California, to LA, and then back again. And by the time I get back, I have to do another oil change. And uh, by the time I get back, I'm gonna have another car with me along with a trailer. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm really, really excited about that. Hopefully you guys will be excited about that as well because that's gonna be premiering in the next episode. And uh, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a teaser for that. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but uh, in the next episode, you guys will see what I bought. So right now, uh, I think that's gonna be it. I am super pleased with these mods. Everything that you guys uh, have seen me do will be in the link in the video description. And uh, if you wanna do it to your 7.3 or 6.0 or 6.4 or whatever Ford diesel you have, uh, go check that out. So anyway, I think I'm rambling enough. Until next time, this is me reminding you guys that on trucks like this that now have to make an insane journey to the other end of the country and back, but I believe that they will without a problem, you guys need to wrench 
every day.